And uh, we're ready to continue now uh, with the cross-examination of Mr. Rivera. So we're going to bring Mr. Rivera into the courtroom at this time. Good morning, Ms. Rivera. Before you have a seat, uh, it's a new day, so we're going to swear you in again, okay, sir? Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Please have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ticos, you may continue with your cross-examination. Thank you, Ron. Mr. Rivera, last night when you left here, you went back to the jail, right? Yes, sir. When you go back to the jail, it's you, yourself, and your cell, right? Yes, sir. And it's been that way since you were arrested in 2016 on this case, right? Yes, sir. So what that means is you're not going through the daily activities that a person on the outside goes through, right? Yes, sir. You don't have to remember to turn off the stove, pick up the kids, stuff like that. Yes, sir. You don't have to remember to file your taxes to go to the doctors, go to the dentist, stuff like that, right? Yes, sir. It's been a matter of being in your cell with your thoughts, with your agreement with this office, right? Yes, sir. Your sole job since 2016 has to be to remember your testimony in this case. Yes, sir. Let's talk about guns. The June trip. There was two guns, right? Yes, sir. Both 38 caliber? Yes, sir. 38 Smith & Wesson short nose? Yes, sir. And a blue steel long nose Taurus? Yes, sir. Garcia had the blue steel? Yes, sir. You had the short nose? Yes, sir. You agree you, you, you bought that short nose? Yes, I did, sir. You bought it to come up here? Yes, sir. And you bought it from a quote, neighborhood, uh, neighborhood from a black boy. Yes, sir. That's what you told law enforcement about where you acquired this gun. Yes, I did. And again, to make sure it's clear, you acquired this gun after a conversation with Garcia. Yes, sir. While he was renting the car to come here. Yes. And you don't know the name or even really a description of the guy that you got the gun from. No, sir. Correct me if I'm wrong, the Latin Kings transfer and distribute guns. Yes, sir. On direct examination, Ms. Kappelman asked you, how many guns were brought for the murder trip, right? Yes, sir. And your answer was two. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you again. How many guns were brought for the second trip, your second trip, the murder trip? I can't remember. Would it help your, your memory to listen to your statement from October 4th of 2016? Yes, sir. If you could put on those headphones for me, please. Oh, yeah. Did listening to yourself refresh your recollection? Yes, sir. I'll ask you again, how many guns were brought? One. All right. So now we have it. Not what you told the government when they asked you the question about two guns. Now it's one gun. Yes, sir. I mean, we all make mistakes. It's been eight years. Memory, you forget stuff. Eight years, who's going to remember? And again, the only thing that you've had to remember over the past eight years is your testimony. Yeah, I don't sit down in my cell and think about this right here. Let's talk about the bullets. You bought those, correct? Yes, sir. You bought those at a gun store? Yes, sir. On Biscayne? Yes, I did. In between 112th and 117th? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
the guns that we spoke about, there's the blue steel long nose and the short nose, the one that you bought. That's it. All right, so the short nose that you bought, that gun was the one that was dumped. Yes, sir. And it was dumped, you say, near a bridge. Yes, sir. By Garcia. Yes, sir. On the ride home. Yes, sir. Now, you claim that you wanted to help them find the murder weapon, right? Yes, sir. But in actuality, you never wanted them to find it. No, they, I don't know what bridge, so many bridges we passed through, I'm not going to... Correct me if I'm wrong, law enforcement knows the very precise route you took, so it's not a matter of checking all bridges in the state of Florida, correct? I'm not going to remember the bridge, sir. That's not my question. Law enforcement knows the precise route that you took home, right? I guess so. And they drove you on that precise route. Yes, sir. And you never pointed out the alleged bridge that the gun I was passed through so many bridges, sir. I'm not going to remember. Just like I told them, I don't remember the bridge. I'm showing you what's been entered in as defense six. This was your best attempt at helping them find the, the murder weapon in this case, right? Yes, you sir. drew this. Yes, sir. Now, let's talk about the amount of times that you went out looking with them. You haven't been out with them since 2016, correct? Yes, sir. And in fact, you only went out a couple of times, a couple of days, a couple of hours to look for this gun, right? I don't remember a couple of times, but I don't remember. Was it less than that? Maybe one time. One time you remember. get into a van, they drive around, look at a couple of couple of bridges, and then give up. I mean, I can't remember. Mr. Rivera, isn't the truth that you, you did what you said you were going to do, which is to put it away and bury that shit somewhere no one is going to find it but me. Yes, sir. You said that, right? Yes, I did. And that's what you did with this gun. No, sir. The gun was never found, right? I never dished it nowhere. I never threw it nowhere. That wasn't my job. You bought the gun. I bought the gun. You handled the gun. Handled it? Like what type of what you talking about? Well, you remember how you told us that time that the guy walked in the hotel room and you picked up both guns and you pointed it at them? Yes, sir. All right, so you touched that gun. Yes, I did. And you gave vague information where it was acquired from and you gave very little information as to where it was disposed of. You did that to protect yourself on both ends, didn't you? Not at all, sir. Now, you are aware that if law enforcement were to get that gun, you could be federally prosecuted. You know that. No, sir. Do you not know that? Do you not remember? Me being prosecuted for if they find a gun? Do you not remember knowing that if they had that gun, they could tie it to interstate commerce? Do you not remember knowing that? No, I don't remember. Your Honor, if I could have one brief moment. Okay. Second deposition, page 279, lines 1 through 9. Do what Mr. Rivera understands first. You're going to refresh his recollection. Let's see what Mr. Rivera understands first. She's going to do that as well, Your Honor. Okay. You may. To save the trips back and forth. All right. Mr. Rivera, this young lady is just going to give you some assistance uh, with reviewing this transcript. If you feel comfortable reviewing it yourself and understanding it, then uh, you can review it and understand it and you just let me know. But if for some reason you don't, uh, she's going to uh, help you or read it to you quietly. To Excuse me? She's going to have to help me. Okay. All right. That's what she'll do then.
Thank you. All set. Thank you. I got uh, up to speak loud. Thank you. Mr. Rivera, has your memory been refreshed? Yes, sir. And we were talking about why you would hide the origin in the disposal of the gun. And I had asked you about you being federally prosecuted. You were, you were aware and you know that if they have that gun, they could tie it to interstate commerce and federally prosecute you on this case. Yes, and it says that I'm not sure, but yes. Yes, that you are aware of that. Not sure if they could, but you're aware that it's, that it's a possibility. Yes, not sure if they could, but yes, I'm aware of it. And that's something that would be a concern because you can't fight the feds. Yes, sir. Now that gun, it would be evidence against you, right? Yes, sir. That you're the shooter. I'm not the shooter. You know, it's interesting that you say that. Mr. Rivera, your testimony was that you drove up the driveway behind that car and that Garcia got out, went inside, and shot Professor Markell, right? Yes, sir. But you knew that Professor Markell's window was up, right? Yes, I can see it. You also knew that he was on the phone when he got shot, right? I pulled up right behind him. I could see him. And you also knew, you happened to have the detail, that he raised his arm when he was shot in the face. I can see that too. Those are odd details for Sigfredo Garcia to shoot him, to jump back in the car and say, drive. Hey, and by the way, he was on his phone, the window was up and he raised his arm. I can see everything, sir. I'm pulled up right behind him. Let's stay in the driveway and return to the issue from yesterday. When I was asking you questions about your, your testimony about claiming to see Wendy Adelson walk down that driveway and into the house the day before the murder. Um, and I'm going to give this to you for context so you know where I'm going. You remember how, how I had asked you questions about the, your exchange with Garcia, how he said she's here to make sure it's getting done, how then he made a phone call to Catherine McBanwa and he made that before noon on Thursday. Now, I asked you that question you didn't remember. Do you remember now? Was that phone call before noon on Thursday? I don't remember the time. Would it, would it help your memory if you were to listen to yourself from your recording on 10-4? Maybe. Did that help your memory? Yeah. And when was it that you said that this phone call happened? I said maybe by noon. All right. You said before 12 noon on Thursday, correct? Yes, sir. Those are your words. Yes, sir. So just to make sure that we have the context correct, for, so it's from yesterday, you have this alleged sighting, this alleged conversation with Garcia, and before you get back to the hotel, before 12 noon, he's on the phone with Katie, finding out what's going on. Mm. Yes, sir. You made all that up, didn't you? No, sir. Now, you were banking on the fact that Garcia, having children with Katie, is always on the phone with her, right? Yes, sir. 
in evidence, we have Kathy McBannell's cell phone records. And would you be surprised to learn that there is no phone call between Sigfredo Garcia and Catherine McBanwa before 12 noon that day? Would you be surprised if I tell you they had throwaway phones? So your testimony now is that Catherine McBanwa had a throwaway phone? They both had throwaway phones. Your Honor, if I could have one brief moment. Okay. Mr. Rivera. On October 4th, 2016, you gave the recorded statement, right? Don't remember. On November 29, 2016, you appeared before a grand jury in this case, correct? Yes, sir. On March 22nd, 2019, you appeared for a deposition in this case, correct? Yes, sir. January 31st, 2018, the year before, a, sec a different deposition in this case, correct? Yes, sir. You've sat in that chair before back in 2019 on October 1st and October 2nd, correct? Yes, I did, sir. And you have never made that claim before that there was a disposable phone? I believe I have. Isn't this you just evolving your story to, to keep up for the, the mistakes? No, sir. Let's talk about cars. Let's focus now on the June trip. Aren't your words the first time we came up, I never drove the car at all? I never drove the first car. I'm showing you what's been entered in as State's Exhibit 65. First term is in June, correct? Yes, sir. You get a citation for driving that car, right? Yes, sir. And in fact, you were alone in that car because you were alone on the first trip. No, sir, not at all. So you get a citation, but you weren't driving the car. That was for Sigfredo. So Sigfredo was driving, but you get the ticket? He was with me. I think we had changed. I think we had stopped somewhere, if I remember. I think we had stopped, and we just, just for that moment, I drove a little bit. Isn't this your testimony evolving again? You make a mistake, It's the change. same answer I gave since day one, man. You're not going to sit here and try to confuse me back and forth. Mr. Rivera, didn't you just so, say two minutes ago to this jury you never drove the first trip? I can't really remember, but now that you say it, yeah, I mean, when I got the ticket, if that was the first car, I guess. You remember everything she asked you, but not what I present you with, right? I tell her the same thing I tell you. If I don't remember, I don't remember. If I say yes, yes. If I say no, it's no. You, know, you make no mistakes about the alleged claims against Ms. McBanwa, but when presented with evidence showing that you're wrong on details, then, oh. I, I don't remember. I'm not wrong, bro. Not at all, sir. Everything I say is nothing but the truth. Let's keep going then. No problem. You have the June trip, and you have the murder trip. Mr. Rivera, how many trips were made for the purpose of this, this killing? Actually, let, let's wait on that for a second. We'll come back in a minute. On direct examination, you testified that the, the purpose of the June trip, this one, where you got the citation being a passenger, um, that the purpose of the first trip was to scout it out. That was your testimony yesterday, right? Yes, sir. Brief moment, Your Honor. Uh, grand jury, page eight, lines three through six. <laughs> Mr. Rivera, you appeared before a grand jury back in 2016, correct? Yes, sir. And it was for the purpose of, this is after you get your deal, it was for the purpose of indicting Ms. McVanwell, right? Yes, sir. I wasn't there, right? We're in the courtroom. No defense attorneys were there, correct? Yes, sir. Faith None of us were there, right? Yes. But you were. Yes. Asking you questions. Yes, sir. There was a court reporter taking down your words, correct? Yes, sir. And you swore to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Ms. Capman asked you the question, OK, and what was the purpose of the first trip to Tallahassee? Answer, the purpose of the first trip was to do the murder of the first trip. Question, to do the murder? Answer, yeah, but I didn't want to do that. 
we were supposed to scope out the place and if it would have got done it would have got done that day but it never happened your testimony happen. years back was the purpose of the june trip when you were alone was to do the murder that was your testimony right to do the murder yes but when she asked you yesterday it's a different answer it's probably been years man can't remember When you're in your cell. I don't think about this. I'll tell you that one more time. I don't sit in my cell and think about this. So don't ask me that question again. You're repeating yourself over and over. Mr. Vera, let's talk about trips. There was the June trip and then the murder trip, right? Those are two of the trips. Yes, but I'm going to ask you an open-ended question. How many trips were there to Tallahassee for the purpose of killing Professor Markell? Two trips. If I believe it was two trips that I said. Two trips? Yes, sir. Second deposition, page 103, lines 16 through 24. Judge, so I'm going to object on this one. Improper impeachment. Do you need to be more specific on the record? I think so, Judge. All right, let's go sidebar. Two trips, right? Yes, sir. You remember a few years back, Miss Kawas and I coming out to Arizona to take your deposition in USB Tucson, right? Yes, sir. We sat in a room, Miss Kawas, Miss Kaplan, myself, you, and a court reporter, right? Yes, sir. You were sworn in before that deposition. You swore to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, right? Yes, sir. You have a cooperation agreement where you have to give truthful testimony, complete testimony, right? Yes, sir. And the court reporter took down all of your words. Yes, sir. Do you remember me asking you 
Like Sigfredo, you were coked up and drinking the whole trip. You, the whole trip and back out every day. Me, this is the first trip in June, the witness. The first trip in June, the second trip, the third trip. Every time we went up there, we was always coked up and drinking. Me, there was a third trip. You, we're going to get to that. There was only two trips. You slipped up, didn't you? No, sir. See, your discovery, your, the reports that you got from their office only talked about two trips, right? Yes, sir. So that's why your testimony was there was only two trips. There's only been two trips. But when you were asked questions on a different topic, you couldn't keep your story straight. And you said, we, not they, we. The first trip in June, the second trip, the third trip, every time we went up there, we was always coked up and drinking. Those are your words, right? Yes. I wasn't tricking you, right? We asked you a straightforward question about drugs and alcohol, and you said third trip. Two trips. Which is inconsistent with the information that you had received in your discovery before you cooperated. Two trips. Now, Mr. Rivera, in all your other prior times, October 4th, January 31st, November of 2019, or I'm sorry, November of 2016, October 1st and 2nd, 2019, no mention ever of a third trip. I don't remember that third trip. You would agree with me if you were to change your testimony to slip up. No, sir. And it were to be found that there were a third trip, that you would be in violation of your cooperation agreement with that office. No, sir. You don't agree with me that if they were to find out there were a third trip, that you would be in violation of the agreement where you must give the truth and the complete truth. I only came up twice. That's not my question. You would agree with me that if you left out a vital fact, a vital trip, that you would be in violation of your agreement. Yes. Can we agree on that? Yes. You've previously sat in that same seat and tried to repair that mistake, haven't you? No, sir. You haven't sat up there before and said, you know what? It was Sigfredo Garcia and King Anthony that made a trip. You, you've never said that before? Yes, sir. Now you're trying to remember my, now you, my memory's coming back. Yeah. Okay. That was that third trip you're talking about, that he came up with somebody else, not me. So there is a third trip. I, I remember, now that you say it, yeah, I remember saying that. But you're saying that I came up here three times, but I only came out twice. That third trip was somebody else. You need to say the whole story. You're just saying half of the thing. I, I said three, I only came out three times. Mr. Come on now. I wasn't there, I don't know the truth. I but just if it's in that paper, read it out right. Okay, we. You understand what we means, right? Yes. Not they, we. Yeah. Okay, but you then tried to correct that because again, you'd be in violation of that agreement. It was, no, no, Sigfredo Garcia, and King Anthony, but that's what we're focusing on right now, yes, that sir. you've previously said that there was a third trip, Sigfredo Garcia and King Anthony, right? Yes, sir. And you know that because apparently Sigfredo Garcia told you that there was this third trip. Yes, sir. You see the stack of paperwork in front of me, right? I see all that. You, you, you've given sworn testimony 10 times before. Yes, sir. The closest that you've gotten to ever mentioning that third trip was the we statement and then in October of 2019. In your recorded interview, October of 2016, you never mentioned a third trip, right? I think I did. Your Honor, um, Mr. Rivera, uh, your October 4, 2016 statement um, was roughly three hours, correct? I don't remember. Your Honor, one brief moment. Thank you. 
So it should be in your statement, right? It should be. It definitely wasn't in your discovery, right? I don't know. I can't read, so I never read that discovery. Yeah, but you had two attorneys, and they reviewed it with you. I mean, it's been a long time, sir. So in the years, let's sidetrack for a moment. In the years, you've had tons of meetings, since your cooperation, tons of meetings with their office, correct? Yes. You've sat down for hours on end with investigator Jason Newland, their investigator, not Tallahassee Police Department, with Jason Newland reviewing your testimony. Uh, don't remember him reviewing no testimony, but I don't remember that. So all the times that there are orders to transport you from jail to their office, wasn't for the purpose of reviewing your testimony? I mean, yeah, we review, but you're talking about my discovery and testimony and all that? No, what I'm talking about is specifically your testimony and specifically whether you ever told Jason Newland about a third trip. I don't remember. Okay. So you don't remember whether you told Jason Newland, Agent Patrick Sanford, or Investigator Craig Isom about a third trip? I don't remember telling them. So you told them about this third trip? Yeah, not, I don't think Jason was there. Okay. So you told... All right, you told Agent Sanford, Investigator Isom, about this third trip between Sigfredo Garcia and one of your Latin King brothers. Yes, sir. All right. You would agree with me that if you didn't, if you never mentioned that, that you would be in violation of your cooperation agreement? Yes, sir. Let's talk about your communication with the outside world when you're in federal custody. Okay? <coughs> when you were in Coleman, if you could explain to the jury what Coleman is. Coleman is a federal, as a Coleman one, it's an active yard. It's a real violent yard. They don't play over there. So back in 2016, before you're charged in this case, you're in Coleman, correct? Yes, sir. And you agree with me that you're able to get access to both legitimate and illegitimate phones while in Coleman, right? Uh, yeah. That you were able to have a uh, three-way call with Sigfredo Garcia through one of your brothers. I never called him on the phone. I'm sorry? I never spoke to him on the phone or did a three-way. It was like a, right. like a text. Now, like a text service. Now that, and some of that happened through a guy named Leanback, correct? Yes, sir. Now, Leanback is a king. Yes. And you would send emails through the system that you have in federal custody to Leanback, and then he would send out texts on your behalf. Probably sound like one email, probably. All right. Now, in May of 2016, starting in May of 2016, you're able to communicate via this, this messaging system with Sigfredo Garcia, correct? Yes. Now, during that time, you're also communicating with Jessica Rodriguez, the mother of your children, correct? Of course. And you're doing that through email. Yes, sir. And her email, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is siannanegron1020 at gmail.com. Yes, sir. That's S-I-A-N-N-A-N-E-G-R-O-N-1020 at gmail.com. Right? Yes, sir. And on May 10, 2016, right around the time of the wiretaps, you email her asking for Garcia's cell phone number. Yes, sir. Do you agree or do you deny that then in May 2016, Sigfredo Garcia is receiving text messages from somebody saying this is Tato? Yes, sir. And that's you, right? Yes, sir. And that's you sending those messages? Yes. Let's stay on the topic of Garcia. Where Garcia lived. He was living on 186th and Biscayne, correct? Yes. There's a period of time that he was living with King Anthony, right? 
if you remember. Probably, I think so. Around the time of 2014. Yeah. All right. Now let's stay on the topic of Sigfredo Garcia. We talk about Catherine. He loved her, right? He still sure loves did. her. He sure did. Crazy about her. Yes. Would do anything for her. Of course. Now, you have known Sigfredo Garcia your entire life, right? Yes, sir. You refer to him as brother. Yes, sir. Now, this isn't just something that you guys hang out on the weekends. You very much are together in the same community hanging out. Yes, sir. You know everything about each other. Yes, sir. You know his reputation in the community. Yes, sir. You know that his reaction, if somebody were sleeping with Katie, he'd confront them, right? Of course. Try to run them over. Yes, sir. You agree with me that it is in Sigfredo's character that he would find somebody that's sleeping with Katie, right? Yes, sir. And hurt them. Yes, sir. Meaning, meet them face to face. Yes, sir. Let's talk now about the dentist and Catherine. You agree with me that Garcia knew about the relationship. Yes, sir. He knew about the relationship with the dentist. Yes, sir. He told you that he knew about it. Yes, sir. And he also told you he was her boss. The dentist was her boss. Yes, sir. And he knew the guy's name. Yes. You'd agree with me that Sigfredo Garcia was angry, right? Yes, sir. And he was jealous. Yes, sir. Now, because of this, because the love of his life was with somebody else, let's back up for a second. Sigfredo Garcia does well with women, correct? Yes, sir. Very much a lady. Yes, sir. He's got real, real light green eyes, right? Yes, sir. Almost like lime green. Yes, sir. Girls flock to him. Of course. Charismatic guy, right? Yes, sir. Very, very well spoken, very tough guy, right? Yes, sir. But for the first time, there was a he had some competition. Yes, sir. Because the guy that he was in competition with had the one thing that he doesn't have, which is finances. Yes, sir. Although Sigfredo being the guy that, that, that was very good with women, he was never really financially secure. Right? Yes, sir. So because of this, Sigfredo, for the first time, in actual jeopardy of losing Catherine, he was going through a lot, right? Yes, sir. He was desperate. Yes. He was drinking. Every day. He was doing coke, like every day, right? Every day. And he was doing it more than usual. Yes, sir. It wasn't usual for him to do it every day, but he was off. He, he, he was not himself. Yes, sir. He was fighting a lot. Every day. And this is around the time of 2014 when they're broken up. So between the end of 2013, half of 2014, he's losing it, right? Yes, sir. He's violent and erratic. Yes, sir. And he actually went so far as to stalking the dentist, right? Yes, sir. And you remember a specific time where in that truck, right? Yes, sir. That black Dodge truck that you guys went to a restaurant, right? Yes, sir. And what you saw was Catherine Banwa sitting outside with the guy that she was dating, and he was flipping out. Yes, sir. He was furious, right? Yes. He actually wanted to take that truck and run over the dinner party that they were with, right? Yes. He was so angry, you had to stop him. Yes, sir. Now let's make sure that we have the context. Before the murder, they're broken up, right? Yes, sir. And then right after the murder, they're back together, right? Yes, sir. Mr. Rivera. Garcia played you, didn't he? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes. He confronted Charles. What do you mean confronting Charles? 
like you said was in his nature, that this guy would confront the guy that was in between him and the woman that he loved. Yeah. That was his nature to do that, right? Yes, sir. Like you said was in his nature. Yes, sir. Like he told you he would do. Yes. And that confrontation turned into a negotiation between him and Charles Adelson. Yeah. Right? You think they spoke? You've told us that this guy would absolutely confront that other guy, right? Of course. And it would be very awkward. What I'm saying is that Sigfredo Garcia came to you with a job, but he never told you it was for. He couldn't tell you, hey, that guy that I just wanted to run over, we're going to do a job for him. Because you as a Latin King boss, you would say, that doesn't make any sense. The government told you Katie was involved, right? No, sir. No, sir. You he, went along with it? No, sir. Because you can't fight the feds? No, sir. So you took it and ran? No, sir. She's been involved the whole time. It's the only one he speaks to. I'm sorry? It's the only girl he speaks to is Katie. Whatever she tells him to do, he jumps and do it. That's his weakness. Her right there. All right, redirect. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Rivera, you were asked if you agreed to the government fa government's facts. Do you remember being asked that? What's facts? Did you agree to the government's facts? I think the question is, did you read or have read to you the reports in this case and then just regurgitate whatever was in the reports? Is that is that what you did? No, ma'am. All right. When you cut a deal, what was your understanding of what you had to do to Cooperate. get the benefit of the deal? Cooperate. And does cooperate mean regurgitate every single thing that's in the police reports? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, what's in the police reports includes Charlie Adelson being involved in this case. You don't know anything about that, do you? No, ma'am. So you're not able to regurgitate that fact, are you? No, ma'am. Would you agree that it would be helpful to the state? You know we're prosecuting Charlie Adelson, right? Yes, ma'am. It would be helpful if you could say Charlie Adelson did it. Yes, ma'am. But you can't do that, can you? No, ma'am. Because you don't know that fact, do you? No, ma'am. The only person that knows that fact is Catherine McBano, right? Yes, ma'am. Because that's who she was dating. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you did correct us on some things we had wrong, didn't you? And for example, the money drop. You got the money the next morning, not the night of, right? Yes, ma'am. And that wasn't in the police reports, was it? No, ma'am. We didn't know about that until you told us, did we? Yes, ma'am. We didn't know y'all shot a hole in the Prius, did we, until you told us? Yes, ma'am. That wasn't in the police reports, was it? No, ma'am. Objection, Your Honor. All right, let's be careful of the leading questions, please. The facts that you agreed to, did we basically get it right? Yes, ma'am. And the facts that you agreed to, are those the facts that you personally have knowledge of? Yes, ma'am. Where does shrimp live? Miami Beach. I don't know the address, but she's staying in Miami Beach. Do you remember the map that Mr. DeCoe showed you with the little island? Does she live on that island? Yes. Oh, yeah. there. Okay. And that's where you sent somebody to pick up Garcia to come get the money at Jessica's house the morning after the murder. Yes, ma'am. All right. And before you sent somebody to go get Garcia from Shrimp's house, did you have your phone in your possession? I have two phones, and um, uh, Anthony has my other phone. All right. And... One of the phones that you had in your possession that morning of the money drop, did you use that phone to talk to Catherine McBanawa? 
She called me. And what did she tell you? She like, who's gonna come get this money? She had the money and y'all need to come get it, right? Yes, ma'am. And that's why you sent somebody out to find Objection, Garcia. Objection, Your Honor, leading. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Kaplan, let's be careful of leading questions, please. Those are leading questions. You were asked if Garcia was stupid and made mistakes in this case. Do you recall being asked that? No, did he did he mess up by talking on the phone, using his phone, making calls? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. You were stupid too, weren't you? I mean, you made some mistakes, didn't you? Both of us were stupid. You're wearing blue partially because you got caught in this case, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you brought a phone to do a murder, yes? Yes, ma'am. Did you rent a car in your own name to come do a murder? Yes. Posted something on Instagram from Tallahassee while you were here? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. That's not a leading question. Did yes. you post something? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so all those are mistakes that ended up helping to get you caught. Yes, ma'am. All right, and you were shown this exhibit, States Democracy. Objection, I didn't show the witness that exhibit. Have you seen this exhibit before? Yes, ma'am. Objection outside of the scope of cross. Right, overrule. All right. And you were asked about the phones that you had. Are, I know you don't remember the phone number because it's been too long. But you've seen this exhibit before today, haven't you? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you were asked about these phones and these phone numbers way back when we first started asking you questions about this case. Yes, ma'am. Years ago, right? Yes, ma'am. All right, and you authenticated those two phone numbers back at that time when your memory was better as being your phone numbers. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you don't remember those numbers as you sit here today? I mean, it's been a long time, but... That's okay, I just want to clarify what the situation is with the, the phone numbers. You did remember them at one time. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and those, you have seen that exhibit before and authenticated those phone numbers as your phone numbers. Yes, I have, ma'am. All right. Prison. I can't remember. The Who was asking you questions? The two detectives. No, I'm talking about at the prison when we did the deposition. Oh, yeah, I can't. Um, I don't know the names like that, but the two lawyers. The two lawyers were asking you questions? Yes, ma'am. And that went on for a whole day, right? Objection. Again, leading. Overruled. How long did it go on? I think it was a whole day. It was, right. lo it was long past. It was a long day. Okay. All right. And you were asked many, many questions. Among them, um, were you asked about this, the trips and how much you were drinking on the trips, how much cocaine you were using on the trips? Were those sorts of questions asked of you? Yes, ma'am. And have you always maintained in that deposition and all the other statements that you were, in fact, using cocaine and alcohol Objection on both improper, trips? Improper bolstering always maintained. Overrule. Yes, ma'am. That's not in dispute, is it? No, ma'am. Okay. And when you were asked about this third trip, you know, I asked you about in the police reports, there were some things that you didn't agree with. Do you recall something being in the police reports or you being asked questions about a woman seeing two men behind Dan Markell's home before, sometime before the murder? Yes, ma'am. All right, and what is your testimony regarding whether that was you behind Dan Markell's home sometime before the murder seen by this lady? No, ma'am. You didn't do it? No. You weren't there? No. So that if that was Garcia, he had to be with somebody else? Yes, ma'am. All right, and you don't have any knowledge of when that trip occurred? No, ma'am. If that trip even occurred? No, ma'am. You weren't here? No, ma'am. But if a tall guy and a short guy were behind that home, that wasn't you? No, ma'am. And have, have you always maintained that? Yes, ma'am. All right, so you've never told anybody that you came here on a third trip? 
they will. Have you ever told anybody that you came to Tallahassee on a third no, trip? No, only came on two trips. All right, and in the deposition taken of you on March 22nd, 2019, you say, and I'm on the bottom of page 109, starting on line 23, question, why would he have gone with Anthony? Answer, because he was one of us. We used to hang out together, and there was some short person that went back there, supposedly in the back of the house, and I ain't never walked back there. And he's short like me. Is King Anthony short? Yes, ma'am. Like you? Yes, ma'am. And that's why you thought maybe this is the person this woman saw. Objection, Your Honor. Saw. Leading improper impeachment. We've got leading questions mm -hmm. and reading a transcript. All right, Ms. Kappelman, this is redirect. You're asking leading questions. I understand you're moving things along. Yes, sir. But you need to clear up your questions and uh, not ask them in a leading form, okay? Or else I'm going to start interrupting you from this point forward. Yes, sir. And so <clears throat> how did you learn that someone was seen behind the house, some short guy? I heard it from a detective. All right. And you... Did you or did you not, or something else, disagree that you were the one that was back there? I was never back there. It wasn't you? No, ma'am. All right. Do you enjoy having to testify against your friends? No, ma'am. Would it have been easier for you if your testimony could have been against someone else, a stranger? Not at all. Nobody. You think it would have been hard no matter what you had to do? Yes, ma'am. But it, was it particularly hard that you have to testify against your best friend and his wife? That's hard. It hurts. Were you loyal to these folks before this all went down? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> when did the defendant and Sigfredo Garcia get back together after the murder? When was the first time they got back together? I can't remember. Do you remember giving uh, testimony previously that that occurred at the Manny Pacquiao fight? Yes, ma'am. All right, and the Manny Pacquiao fight was in May of Objection, 2015, Honor, improper, wasn't it? Improper, well, improper refreshment is that it's just being said in open court to the witness. Overruled. When was the Manny Pacquiao fight? I don't remember what day was it. I know it was on a Saturday. And that's the day they got together because I tried to put them, me and Jessica tried to put them together. Because I right. went and bought some shirts from her that day. All right. And so it wasn't until approximately 10 months after the murder that they got together, not the, or was it right after the murder as you were asked on cross-examination? Objection, Your Honor. Proper refreshment if we can go sidebar. No, Can't overruled. Can't remember. Okay. Can you remember that it was definitely the fight, or could it have been sooner? Probably the fight. Your recollection, it, was, it occurred at the fight? Probably the fight. Okay, but you just don't remember when the fight was? Yeah, I don't remember when the fight was. Okay. All right, let's talk about this supposed um, confrontation that occurred at a restaurant. You, you know which one I'm talking about, where you were with Sigfredo Garcia watching Katie with the dentist at the restaurant? On the truck, yes, ma'am. Okay. And during that whole episode, did Sigfredo Garcia ever get out of the car? I can't remember. So he might have gone up and confronted the dentist, and you just don't remember? No. He never got off the car and confronted him at all. All right. That's my question. Okay. Did they actually, did the two meet? No, ma'am. Did they fight? No, ma'am. Did they have a verbal argument? No, ma'am. Did Sigfredo Garcia confront him that night about, hey, you're no, sleeping with my woman? No. All right. And is that something he would have told you if that? Yes. If he had done Objection, that? Objection, speculation, move to strike. It, that is speculation. That's sustained. What type of relationship did you have with Sigfredo Garcia back then? We had a great relationship. That was like my brother. All right. Did he confide in you? Everything he did, did he tell you everything? Objection, speculation. Uh, it's overruled. Did he tell you everything? Basically everything, yes, ma'am. You were together every day, weren't you? Every day. All right. And you were there when this incident occurred at the restaurant? Yes, ma'am. And that it didn't happen as far as him confronting the dentist? No, ma'am. No face-to-face? -face. No. Nope. No physical? No. Nope. Objection, asked and answered multiple times. Overruled. And what did y'all do after that confrontation? How did you 
unwind him. Uh, we just, we left. We just, I said, man, we can't. He wanted to run the truck right through the restaurant. I told him, nah, we ain't gonna do that. Not with me in the truck. But we ended up leaving. We just left. All right, do you remember what y'all did that night? No. Did you hang out together? Every day we hang out. Okay, and that night was no exception? Uh, we, hung out, we hung out that night. I don't know where I... Okay, well, you don't have to know where, but did y'all spend time together, and did he recover himself from being upset, as upset as he was? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. All right, nothing further, Judge. All right. Uh, do you want uh, Mr. Rivera retained? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Rivera will be retained. Uh, thank you. You'll be escorted back. Thank you, sir. Ms. Kappelman, do you have another 